Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show how you can use auto ML within the Azure ML service. And I'm just going to go ahead, start from scratch. I'm in the Azure portal here and I'll create a new resource and I'll search for machine learning. And we do this first one just called machine learning here and create. Now fill in some details in the resource group. Give it a workspace name. I'll just call it auto ML demo. See if that's available. Put in the region and I give it the basic workspace edition. Later on, we'll do videos using the enterprise. There we go. And we'll create this and it should probably take a few minutes to create. All right, our deployment's complete. I'm not sure why this is grayed out. I can go up here to my notifications and go to it. And what we want to do here is we're going to try this new machine learning studio. We'll go to that. And this is going to be different than the, the old Azure ML studio where it was just a, the drag and drop experience. This is a whole workflow experience here. So we can do notebooks. Uh, there's a new designer here. We can manage our assets. And we'll go over a couple of these things. First thing, let's start some notebooks here. And we'll create a new notebook file. So we we'll call it auto ML. It'll be a notebook. There we go. We can do it kind of inline here, but we need a compute in order to run it. So we we'll go create a new compute here, auto ML compute. And we'll keep it with the CPU, but we can use a GPU if we need to. And I'm going to scale this down actually, because we don't need to do much. You can enable SSH. SSH access if you need to, and a couple other advanced settings already exist. All right, so create on that. This might take a few minutes. You can say it's creating up here. All right, so this compute is now running, and we can manage this by going to the compute section and create new ones or updating those. Let's go back to the notebook here. And I want to edit. We can edit in Jupyter Notebook or in Jupyter Lab. I prefer Jupyter Lab, so I'm going to click that. And go and it launches our instance of Jupyter Lab for us, and opens that notebook as well. And before I start this, we need some data to look at. So I go back over here to Datasets, and I'll create a dataset from a local file. And I'm using the housing dataset, so I'll call this housing. Version one is tabular. You create a new data store, and I call it. We just call it a housing data, DS for data store. Uh, there we go. Blob storage. We use our current subscription, and we'll put it in our storage account that we already have into our data container. And we need to give it an account key to connect to it. So in Azure Storage Explorer, I can go up to the storage account and on the properties down here, it gives me some keys so I can get the primary key and use it there. I can create this data store. All right, so it's using that data store and let's browse for that data. Use a housing CSV. There we go. I'll click next. It's going to upload the file. I guess so now we got a update some settings on how it reads here. So it's delimited, comma delimited, and we get a preview of it down here. So column headers from the first file, the first line pretty much. And we don't need to skip any rows, so we click next. That's a schema. We can double check the schema is correct. And we can tell it to not include a certain columns if we know we're not gonna need them. And we can confirm and create. All right, so now we have a data set. And let's go back to our notebook here. And because we are running it in our Azure ML compute, uh, I can just go ahead and do some imports. I don't need to install anything. So Azure ML is already installed as well as scikit-learn. And we import a few things uh, from Azure ML. We import the workspace, dataset, and experiment, as well as the auto ML config, since we're going to use using auto ML 
and then a run details widget that will show how what that looks like. Then we import the train test split and the mean squared error methods from scikit-learn. So next we need to get our workspace. We can call workspace that from config. And again, because we're running in our auto ML com compute, it knows how to get that. But we need to do authenticate here. There we go. So we did that successfully. Next, let's get the housing data set by calling data set get get by name here. At first we pass in the workspace and then the name which was housing and we can double check that we got something from there. There we go. So we've got that version one name and all that. Next we can get a data frame from it by calling the housing data set and call the two pandas data frame method. So just converts the data set to a pandas data frame. Here we go. And we can double check by calling the head method. And we got that and we can verify the data looks like we expect it to. So next we can call the train test split. So I'll call it, we're going to return an X train and X test. Call the test train test split method. I'm just going to give it a full data set here. We're not getting any labels separate from it. Give it a test size of, uh, let's, let's do 1% here, and a random state of 42. And now we need to set some auto ML settings here. It'll be a dictionary. First, it's going to be iteration timeout minutes. So for each iteration, have it run at, at least two minutes. Next would be experiment timeout minutes. This would be the length of the entire experiment. And I think the at least number of minutes you can do is 15, so we'll do that. And we set enable early stopping. So that be true. And this is gonna be, as it's going, going through the uh, different iterations there if it notices the metric that we that we choose isn't improving it, it'll stop early instead of continuing on through the entire experiment timeout speaking of the metric we can set the primary metric and here we'll do experiment correlation but you can use r squared or other metrics as well and we tell it to we tell the featureization to auto so it's going to do some auto featureization for us like dropping null values and stuff like that and we can get the number of cross validations to fold on we we'll give it five all right so with those settings we can create an auto ml config using that auto ml config class we give it a task it's going to be a regression we can give it a debug log as auto ml errors.log we set the training data to x train and then we just give it the label column name which is going to be median house value and let's move this to another line and then we need to give it the auto ml settings and these are named parameters kind of like what these are here but this is a dictionary and so in order to kind of create this dictionary into name value pairs we do the star star in front of the variable name there so we've got a config and now we can create a new experiment with the experiment class pass in the workspace give it a name we do housing experiment and now we'll get a run from this experiment by calling experiment that submit. Give it the auto ml config. Tell the show output equals true. And this is actually what's going to run auto ml. So this is going to take several minutes to run, especially depending on what you set as the timeout minutes up here. And it says running on local machine. It's, it's going to be running on this compute that we set up. 
So we'll let this run for a few minutes and we'll come back when it's done. All right, so this run completed and it looks like I missed this cross-validation parameter. Instead of in cross-validation, it should have been in cross-validations. Uh, so, which is why it probably did this cross-validation with the number of folds of three. And it did some other things here. So no missing values were detected and high cardinality uh, was not detected. So cool that they do that for you there. And down here is where it goes through all the different iterations of the models. And we have a best model. And we see the best one has a theorem correlation of around 92%, so not too bad. So now that we have that run, we can use that run details widget, passing that run, and then call show on it. And it gives us a little bit more of a nicer look at that run. So for instance, this is probably the best model here different statuses on each iteration. And I think the, the hue of the color correlates to the, the metric. So the darker the color, the higher the metric. Most of these are kind of along the same. They got a, one that wasn't as good here. And you got a little bit of a graph down here. So of all the iterations for the, for the metrics. And up here is the line of where the best one is. The first one was the best for a while, then kind of up here and went up a little bit. And we can see this run in Azure Machine Learning Studio with that link. But also, we can go back here, go to Experiments, and we, here's that experiment. And there's that run that we just did. It's kind of the same thing that we saw in the notebook. The best model here, we can see different metrics that it took, we have an R squared, uh, root mean squared error. And you get the, the run settings here. So it's regression. Uh, deep learning was disabled. Uh, it took 15 minutes or a quarter of an hour. Uh, let's see what else. We got a bunch of stuff here. Look at our models. We got the stack ensemble. So this is our best model here. And I think there's this explanation here. It's in preview. So we got some model explainability here. So median income had the most feature importance followed by ocean proximity and then the location of the, and then the area of where the house is. And it's like the total rooms uh, didn't matter as much. Got some outputs. I think we can look at that. There's a, the model as a pickle file there. Now let's go back and do a couple more things. Let's, we can get the, the best run from the experiment as well as the fitted model from it by using the run that get output method and we can print out the best run and we can print out the fitted model as well and it gives us kind of that pipeline and we can use we can get some predictions here uh, we'll call using that test data set that we get from the split call drop on it to drop the median house value on the columns and then we can use the fitted model that predict method on these items and let's print these out there we go so we can use that fitted model to make predictions again we already have that model here so we can download this if we need to uh, do some other things with it. All right, uh, I'll end things there. That's just a way to show how you can use the Azure ML service to do to run auto ML and a couple of other cool things that it gives for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.